and they go around and play all over the place. They're playing over the defensive line. It's amazing music. Yeah. We have a lot of art in this town, a lot of people, a lot of theater, a lot of music. Close to four or five in the morning. And that's when the guys that work there, they're supposed to work there, they start cleaning everything up. And over the years, going back many, many decades, 
they swear they've seen a full-size image of an elderly man, good build, gray hair, standing behind the bar when we got our drinks in the front, by the tap, as if he was ready to pour a drink. Now, this was the Civil War Hospital for the Southern Army. And while there were no, no fighting in Savannah itself, there was a lot of skirmishes on the outside of Savannah. <coughs> and those wounded were brought here from the South and taken care of. Now the South, in the Civil War, a lot of people, we didn't have great medical care in the Civil War. Medicine was not that far advanced from the Stone Age. The the tools were rudimentary. They had laudanum and a few things like that, but no, and no real anesthesia that we have today. No antibiotics. Uh, complete ignorance when it comes to the knowledge of germs and how germs spread infection. People die from that. And 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 and, and, and the types of weapons they used. The muskets with the musket balls shot the bullet out with such a low velocity it did not go in a straight line like like you know like a laser it sort of wobbled around and then it would hit you and kind of rattle around in your body if it hits you in your main part of your body your torso it would put you down they, most of the time you weren't dead you just bled out on the field but if it hits your arm and a leg they did not have the procedures back this back then to save them so they had to cut them off otherwise you'd die of leg poisoning Right. So anyway, they'd be bringing them on in over here. And the ones that had that amputation, the doctor would give them a shot of lodge or a drink of whiskey, put a stick in the mouth, hold them down, and saw off the, uh, the appendix the question. They get that sawed it off, and they stuffed it full of sawdust. Oh. And I'm sure it was sterile. Oh, yeah. And then they take a big hot iron, <coughs> red hot, and sear the opening. So you get to smell all that blood, burning blood and sitting in feet and stuff in the air. And they put you on a cot and hope you live. Only about 20% of the soldiers that had amputations on well, both sides of the war survived. It was not success. It was not a successful operation. Most died of disease still, or infection. Back after the war, about 1885, 1890, there was a there was a particular very well-known men's shop in town. And these two gentlemen went, went in there one day looking for some new booze. And they didn't know each other. They started looking, they started, started talking, because they kept looking at the same boots, the same shoe. And they found out that they each fought in the Civil War. But one fought on the northern side and one fought on the southern side. So eventually they decided to get a pair of boots. After that, they become great friends. They both marry. One has a daughter, one has a boy. They end up getting married, all from going to that shoe store. Now, why did they why did they decide to buy some boots together? Exactly. One had a right leg, one had a left leg. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Hey man. How you doing? Good. Cheers. <laughs> There, where everybody else is at. Filling behind them. Filling this one. Come on down this way, but guys in the second row, third row. There you go. Plenty room for everybody. We all here? Yeah. We are. Okay. Good. One's a matter. Huh? One's a matter. Yeah, if you're not here, <laughs> speak up. <laughs> this is Colonial Park Cemetery. It's the only above ground cemetery existing from the uh, Revolutionary War period. Okay, okay, from the 1700s. Now, we just walked, since we left the bar and came this way, we walked over the other half of the original cemetery. That's comforting. <laughs> they don't bite. Oh, by the way, the reason you're not standing here, lately we've had a few incidences. And I lost a couple of people in the last week or two on tours. Lost them? Well, see, there's, 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 there's coffins under here. And, and all the reason all the bricks aren't level is because they're decaying in one form or another down there and all sorts of things are happening. And every once in a while there's a crevice that shows up in the sidewalk. And one of the people come up and grab that person and I don't even know what As long as a bone don't stick about Who? You. I got high knees. That's it. Quick. Quick. People anyway, <laughs> anyway, so there were originally were 10,000 bodies buried in these two cemeteries, and about 6,000 of those 10,000 are in one big pit grave. Wow. And all those are buried over here now. And that was pit grave from the, uh, the, uh, the L fever epidemic in 1820. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things that have occurred in this cemetery, or the cemetery represents. It took its last body in, in 1845, by the way. So, come time of the Civil War, there were no fresh buried people here. Uh, in the back of the cemetery, over that way, there's a whole area dedicated to those who fought and died in duels. Because in America, prior to the, the Civil War, it was legal to have duels with either cutlasses or saint, with, uh, with pistols. Okay. And the designated place in Savannah for dueling was the, the back end, or the north end of the cemetery. Hmm. And we didn't have to drag the body far very okay. So anyway, one of the headstones over there says, here lies John. He died by the hand of the man who shot him. Very poetic. The best headstone I ever saw was in Salisbury, England, near the Salisbury Cathedral. And it said, here lies Corporal So-and-so. He died of a warm beer on a hot day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so Heat stroke. Heat stroke. But anyway, there's some very famous people that are buried here as a result of duels. One person's buried right over there, next to that crypt over there, and that's Liam McIntosh. And the other person is, but with that, he's buried all the way over that way, 
You can see the Roman columns, the Greek columns that are over there for the memorial, and we'll see it a little bit better later. He's buried over there. Who is? Uh, Button Gwinnett. Oh, now, Gwinnett. Button Gwinnett was former governor and all that stuff, but both the Button Gwinnett and Liam McIntosh were planters here uh, in, in the early 1700s. They immigrated over from England. They had their plantations here. They were both asked to serve as representatives for the colony of Georgia to the Second Continental Congress. Okay? Signers of the Declaration of Independence. Generals for George Washington. And after the war, they came back, where Gwinnett became governor. Gwinnett County? Yes. So anyway, some time went along. And roughly around the 1790s, one night, these two gentlemen were in a bar. And they got to words. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. From the time they met, they never liked each other. They always argued and fussed like two old mother-in-laws. <laughs> But they all thought they just couldn't get along for nothing. So they had a, a row that night in public, and the and, and Gwinnett gets so ticked off, he calls McIntosh an SOB. Basically. Son of a and, and McIntosh <laughs> says them fighting words. I demand satisfaction. And that demanding satisfaction, man, we're gonna have a duel. Ooh. Now back in the day, you didn't just get up with a guy and go meet behind the schoolyard at two o'clock. You had your representatives. It was, everything was very proper. Mm -hmm. So they had the representatives meet to discuss the terms of the deal. Well, Governor Gwinnett's people come back to him and go, Governor, why don't you just say you're sorry? You know, you're hot-tempered, you're, you're hot-blooded, you're ill-tempered. <laughs> come on. Just let it go. You don't need to do this. We're worrying about you. And Gwinnett goes, I don't care. I'm tired of this and I'm gonna have my day. Okay. Then they go, but Governor, McIntosh has won 16 duels in a row. Oh, 16 duels. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like Good shot. So the guys, the representatives got back together to rediscuss the terms of the, of the duel. They decided they were gonna shoot at each other's feet. I do that. Okay. Hit the ground to save their honor. Care. Like I said, yeah, I need not injure either any either party. Unfortunately, when good, when when but when Leah McIntosh fired his pistol, instead of hitting the ground by his by Gwinnett's feet, he hit Gwinnett's kneecap, and kneecap died of blood poisoning three weeks later. Oh. Uh. Got to be careful with see children. Don't don't play with fire. <laughs> the gentleman buried here. You can't really see it right now, but he was buried full military honors in the 1800s here in Savannah. He was an immigrant from France. When he was in France, he was part of King Louis's Navy. He was a captain of one of the frigates of the French Navy. More importantly, he was a French captain who served under an American captain, John Paul Jones, during the Revolutionary War in fighting the British in the open sea. Um, there was a point in time we had no Navy. Franklin and Thomas Jefferson were over there in Britain and in, in France trying to get help militarily for our, for our new founding nation. And they and they desperately needed was a Navy to, to confront the British on the open seas. And finally, Louis gave a squadron of ships for John Paul Jones to command. The only thing is Louis told his captains, if you don't want to fight, you don't have to. You can hang out. Sit back. Well, this captain, along with several others, never did that. They were by, he was by John Paul Jones' side with his ship in every major engagement they had with the British. And after the war, he had to leave France because if you were anywhere near associated with royalty after, after, during the French Revolution, you lost your head over the whole thing. So he had to get out because he was considered a royalist. So he came to Savannah and raised his family and died here in military on the um, Yellow fever. Back in the day, they didn't know about germs, remember? And they didn't know about flies or other animals carrying disease. They thought you got yellow fever from the fumes, from the dead and from the swamps. <laughs> so they would fire cannons down the streets, hoping the black cordite gunpowder that comes out in the way of smoke would disseminate the, the the fuse. 
And they'd have you drink this tar turpentine mixture to help <laughs> purify your body. I think some people are doing that again. Mm. <laughs> Alternative medicine. Probably. <laughs> no, they are. They have the ladies talking about I would not. full shock. No, I would not. Yeah. No way. Jägermeister's bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> Probably does a better job than the first time. It's actually kind of tastes like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Look up rope worms sometime. You'll find a whole other oh my God. history. Yeah. So anyway, the people were dropping like flies. And the, the disease of yellow fever was hideous. It's, 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 it's hideous at best. You, you, you turn yellow in color, your bones swell. You'd, you'd, you'd shake violently because the fever was so high. And you throw up from your mouth and your nostrils this bloody red, bloody black mess. mess. And then you would die or at least appear to be dead. And just like you've seen in the old days, they the cart comes by and they throw the bodies on the carcass. It's such a highly contagious disease, they ain't waiting around to see you come back. They throw you on the cart and they haul you to the mass to the pit, the pit graves. Every once in a while, one of the people get thrown in the cart and he would try to get out and say, I'm not dead yet. And somebody come over to the club and hit him. You can say, you will be. But can you imagine? Now, the reason the people would rise up in the cart is because while they looked like they were dead, they were all, they were merely in a coma. But people didn't know what comas were. Okay, can you imagine being buried in a mass pit grave, having been in a coma, waking up and trying to take a gasp of breath, feeling all these bodies pressing against you. And then as you try to breathe, you suffocate or drown because of all the dirt goes into your mouth and die a second time. Hmm. Now, the, the whole point about being buried alive and being was was a real issue, and way before the time of Christ, it was a, it was an antidoted issue that people were buried alive, but nobody knew anything about it or what to do about it. Uh, ben Frank got so bad in the 1700s. Ben Franklin says, "When I when I die, I want to be shot in the head." So he knows he's dead. <laughs> so by the Victorian period, they started figuring they better do something about it. So first they put glass windows or little windows in the tops of the caskets. Well, then they came up with this idea of putting a, be a, a bell on your finger with string or bell on a pole with a string going down into the coffin. So that you would be buried. You'd either be a, a hole in, drilled in the ground so you'd ring the bell while you're in the coffin, make, somebody could hear you, or you would pull the string to ring the bell so somebody could hear you. And because they had this way of now figuring out if somebody was still alive, they hired other people to watch over the newly buried dead for the first 24 hours. And so if, if you rang the bell and they got you out in time, you were saved by the bell. <laughs> if they didn't get you out in time, you were a dead reader. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the people employed to watch over the newly buried dead all night long became known as the graveyard shed. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I watch like all of them, and they do start yeah. off. <laughs> and I found that by mistake too. That's funny. You need to watch it. And like when he breaks it down, I'm like, it's a black yeah, Zach guy. Morris. He, he, now, he was, was a fuck boy. Well, Zach Morris was like the original fuck boy. He was. He was a city boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little dude. Let's see what the time that works happened with the life of a little more. Hey, let me. You know that. You've never heard of him. You've never seen him? No. You know who Zach Morris is? Yeah. Okay. You were raised in the right? Right? Because I always see you be like, you're smart, but like, all over the day, you'll come with other stuff. Can everybody tell me what's going on? Yeah, I'm to be in the loop. You 
after this because I don't want to get you as, as wet as I think everybody's going to get in an hour. Okay. All right. So we're going to walk fast. Right. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's going to be soaking wet. Where's the next part? Where's the next part? Yeah. So anyway, remember, remember I talked about the, rebel, the Civil War being fought here. Well, during the Civil War, when Sherman came into Savannah, he used this cemetery to put all his carts, his wagons, and his horses. And as they rolled in, they rolled over all the tombstones. They took the bodies out of the vaults so they could sleep in. They cut all the trees down for firewood. They destroyed the place. And it's never been the same since. This is nowhere how this cemetery looked back in the 1700s or the late North early 80s. You know, um, Unfortunately, they not enough to. They didn't have enough left to put it back right. And the odds are, like, large percentage of the headstones aren't even in the right location because by the war's time they lost. The, they didn't have good details on where everybody was buried. And a lot of this, the headstones have been broken up so much. You had by the time they put them back together, they maybe sometimes they couldn't really make out the name and stuff like that. So. One last story here before we head out. You know, back in the day, when I was growing up, boys and girls played in their neighborhoods in the streets and then outdoors. Today, everybody stays inside on their computer or their, their, their Game Boys or whatever they've got. Definitely their Game Boys. You know. <laughs> well, I know. I, okay, Switch. How about that? There you Nintendo go. Nintendo Switch. I know. <laughs> I had a Game Hey, the Tinder. Yeah, they, you know. But some of those things have made a comeback and are very collectible now, right. too. Yeah. But anyway, you know, people used to go outside and have fun instead of yep. being in doors and, 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 and huddled around a screen of some sort. But anyway, well, kids used to like to play in the cemetery. But, you know, hide and seek and stuff like that. Now this one guy named Renee, this one guy named Renee was 15 years old. He sort of looked like him. He had, you know, had, a, good, had a good build. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but had a good build. Just like him, a little slow. Oh man. Seemed a little off. Oh man. <laughs> Radio. Oh, radio. Yeah, very appropriate. I guess Is that your nickname? Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, Renee liked to use to play with the little critters. Little lizards and little snakes and squirrels and birds. And they used to hang them from the trees. And some would cut open and stuff to see how they work. And some, a lot of them they hung up, of course, would wiggle and die. It's the first song I've seen. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's funny how you just brought Leonard and Leonard to the rest of the store. So anyway, one day in the area that he liked to play in, there was a young girl's body found dead, uh, somewhat abused, under some bushes. And being the very adept people that they were back then, they automatically came to the conclusion 
it, 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 it's that guy. <laughs> and you're the mom. You know? So they went to Renee's house, pushed the parents out of the way, grabbed Renee, took him out to the swamp and hung him, and watched him dangle and die. Mm -hmm. The problem is the murder still continued for a period of time, never been solved. Come on, guys. Let's go drink. We saw that after we signed up for this. Can you just do it? Yeah. We're right there. Okay, we well, need to let us know. We're right, not far from there. Okay. Yeah, we were definitely. Hey, let me know. I know you're not going to write. I think they got you. I mean, more than likely, I'll just tell you that everybody knows what. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I got you. But yeah, we spent all night at the house after that. Okay. All right. Yeah, we got to send them here. <laughs> Do it. All right, we'll come around. Trying to store the world a bit more to this. Here. Like, really? Yeah. It's all free for that. Okay. They're not far. Right down 400. Right down. Get here four and a half. Oh, okay, yeah, four, yeah. So four and a half. About three and a half. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can't. We grow for three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It only yeah. takes us two hours to get the main house. You didn't even get to the main house. There's something you would like to see to get to it. Next time you get to it. So it's not. <laughs> huh? Uh, yeah, I got a bunch of videos. So, uh, the name of the channel, if you type it up, is Paranormal Savage. Paranormal Savage, okay. Yeah, I've got, I don't know, 400 videos on there. Some of it's, uh, a lot of it's ghost hunting, and then some of it's um, edited, like, movies I put on there that I've made, oh, that kind of thing, and, like, I don't know, like, monsters and Ouija boards and stuff like that. A lot of this stuff I just take and, I just upload it, yeah. you know, I don't edit it, but I have edited some stuff. Yeah. Like Bobby Mackey's when I was there, I edited that with the Ghost Adventures. So you'll see one. There's a couple of them on there for Ghost Adventures from them. That was ten years ago. Come on, guys. We walked a lot. Yeah, it was one of the most affordable ones. That's what, yeah. Yeah, it was. We found a deal to North. At least you got that good weather. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank God we don't have the summer heat anymore. Oh. What's that face? Oh. I was in hey guys, a couple yeah, things. Uh, couple things. Crazy. We're going to go in here a minute and get a drink. When you do go in, this is one of those places. Oh, this is the first place you have a credit card out. And as soon as they get your drink for you, your credit card. Yeah, this is it. You get your drink, yeah, you get your drink you get the credit card. Brother history? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, because yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, there's only yeah. two bartenders here, okay? Hey, Craig, I'm going to give him some Ghost Brother history really quickly. Oh, okay. <laughs> he sounded <Okay>. disappointed. <laughs> 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 He's like, whatever. Okay, we can wait to do that to when you come out and get the drinks, because that's going to take a minute to do. But we can do that even in there when we're got, All right, we'll, we'll wait, guys. So, just hold, uh, just hold on. But we'll do that in there once we get inside, okay? Um, we got you. And don't, you're gonna wrap around the bar as much as you can. Get my, you can all buy this shrimp. Nobody's gonna hit. We have no issue. Bicycler, almost ran into us. Crazy drivers in this town. Scared the crap out of me. Crazy drivers. Anyway, anyway, please remember one thing. Tour guides, we all, we ever, when everybody in the tour guide business is in the service industry, if you enjoy tours of any sort in Savannah, Georgia, when you go on them, 
Remember, at the end of your experience, if you like it, take care of them like you would anybody else that's a bartender or a waitress. That's just not for me, but it's anybody you deal with in town. And, 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 and unfortunately, it's been a lost art. And um, so we all try to help remind everybody it is, it's, still, it's, still, it's still a time-honored tradition. <laughs> anyway, go on in, get a drink. Uh, and he's gonna tell, we're going to tell a couple of stories down there while we're in the bar, too. This is 1790. Okay. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you? Get for you. Yeah. Sweet work for us, Yeah. Anything else for you? Yeah. 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 And can I get a peach Jim Beam and a um, Sprite? Well, what other peach mostly do you have? That's the only one. Yes, ma'am. You want it on the rocks with just a splash of Sprite? You want a lemon, lime, or orange with it? No? All right. You want that together? What is all this? Why do you keep doing that? Because I talked to Jack. What is she watching? What are you watching? What are you watching? But what are you watching? What are you watching? What are you watching today? Samuel Adams. What is that going to be for you, sir? Yeah. It's going to be $5. Yeah. What kind of tequila do you guys have? I've got um, 1800 silver, German silver. I've got a reposado called De Leon. I've got Jose. Um, I've got a little bit of the Espelon left. But the new ones must be in uh, midtown. You want that on the rocks? Uh, you want it on the rocks? Yes. Somebody got my drink. Okay. So it should be like, uh, that means you pay for it, sir. That means you All right, you tell me how much you want. It's going to be 12. It's going to be on that same menu. James Blizzard. Thank you Huh? Did you leave it at the last one? No, no. Actually, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. La Parea! No, 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 no,
almost came from it. It almost came from that. It almost. It didn't make it. It didn't make it. It stopped me. It stopped with this. Thank you, sir. It is stopped. You have a great night. Thank you, too. Yeah, this is very Thank you. Hey. Race walk or something? I heard you say. Or? No, I'm about to know. Huh? Oh, thank you. City? You just, I heard you talking to somebody back there about having a ghost walk and shit. Perfect. You're talking about having a, I don't know, something like ghost walk or something Where? like that. Earlier, I, I don't know what he was talking Here? about. No, somewhere else I think he was talking about. Oh, we were talking about, we were, we were, uh, we were in Roswell. Roswell? Georgia. Uh, okay. I don't think I've been to Roswell. Was that pretty close to Atlanta? Or? Yeah, it's not far. Not far when y'all doing that? Um, we had to reschedule due to some weather issues, so. We gotta look at another date. So if y'all, I mean, um, have y'all already been confirmed for? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
you were getting water. I am. I just thought that was water. It did. Well, y'all y'all said that it was really good. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to get the opportunity to sleep. Maybe Thank you so much. Thank you. She's first. Um, can I get a hippie juice, but is that is that pre mixed right there? No, we make it. I just, as a matter of fact, I just made that. Okay. Um, not as much, like, juice. It's, okay, it's already mixed together. It's, all, oh, it's oh, already so right there. Okay. I okay. made it earlier. It's, it's got oh, all okay. of that good stuff in it. Okay. Everything there you see is in Okay. It. Thank you. You want that? Yes. Yes. How about you, sir? Uh, I'm going to do uh, a sweet water okay. and a Jameson and ginger ale. Okay. What is sweet? Oh, sweet water. Okay. You want a lime on Jameson and ginger ale? No, I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm having. You are together? You separate? What's up, friends? Oh, Oh, hey! It's gonna be a $12 piece. Hey, thank you. <laughs> they won't let me go in. That was real. Is it? I'm um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're finishing up right now. It's a eight dollar shot. I think it's grown in Savannah. You're good. Huh? You're good. Yeah. They were gonna have. Yeah, I was gonna have that one. Yeah. Oh, that's the first one. This is eight. Cheers. I like the, like the tavern down below. It's less normal on the weekends. We have a piano player down So there are a lot of little fish that would like to keep the license going in town. Of course, it, at the Pink House, um, it's kind of a strange place. The Pink House, if you're a server in the main dining room, one of the main dining rooms, Time they've had to swap out waitresses from one room to another in order to seek the approval of Mrs. Havisham. She's probably 200 something years old right now, but she's still there seeing over her house. Uh, Mrs. Havisham, on a scale of 1 to 10 on, uh, on attractiveness, was a minus 25. Okay. <laughs> Real attractive. She was so <laughs> 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 I mean, the first time I saw her picture, I say, what? <laughs> she must have had a lot of money. <laughs> well, people used to marry for, you know, wealth, title, money. True. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my still do. <laughs> In fact, she had such a chip on her shoulder. 25 year old bald man. The house. The pretty woman. Mr. Howard. <laughs> they would throw a party. I mean, and she'd have to go around and check out all the girls 15 and older. Mm. And the ones she thought were oh, attractive, that were really pretty, <laughs> she'd lower the bedrooms and walk into the night so Mr. Havisham wouldn't hit on her. That sounds like a little boy. I like it. I'm so glad men have changed. We not like that no more. Yeah. Okay. So, no, no. <laughs> oh, my kid. Kid, you you yourself. So, tell us about the Ghost Brothers. What's you got story, a story to tell? Boy? Oh, yes. So, they were trying to be funny like he wasn't a part of it. Uh, <laughs> like he wasn't the, the originator. So, when we first came up with the concept of Ghost Brothers, Savannah was the first place we investigated. And this is actually the place we stayed to investigate. So Daylin and I, Daylin and I, and this guy named Spike Spielberg. He was the guy. Steven Spielberg's brother? <laughs> and Spike Long and his cousin. Long story. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, all three of us, we did our first love investigation. He was our video, he was our cameraman. We did our first investigation right here in this hotel. 
But yeah, this place has a lot of history to yeah. it. Yeah, gold. Because without this place, we would have probably never had a TV show. So. Really? It's what yeah. made you? Yeah, really, for real. Really, really, really. So it's it's well, yeah. It's, yeah, there's a bedroom right actually. Yeah. 204. 204. Now, why do you bring that up? <laughs> you know that.